Welcome back to another GTN Coaches Corner where you can send in your triathlon training, racing related questions using the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner and we will answer those questions where we can in a future GTN Coaches Corner. Now this week we've got some great questions in, one around stitch and how to prevent it during a race, whether you can adapt a training plan to fit around your everyday life and working life, why your heart rate might be lower or at the end of a training block, and whether you should use carbs if you're predominantly just working in zone two, and why your heart rate might differ on the bike versus when swimming. So let's jump on into this. First off with that stitch question. This one comes from Marlon Paz. They said, a few months ago, I was running a 10 kilometer running race and was going for a new PR. But at the last mile, I experienced a side stitch for the first time, which at the time I didn't know it could happen. After that, I spent time doing more core exercises at least once per week to avoid future incidents. But last weekend during the New York City half marathon, I was feeling great throughout the race and decided to step up the pace the last 5K. But unfortunately, with just 2K left the race, it happened again. What should I do to avoid from happening again? I have my first 70.3 coming up in four months and now I'm afraid it will happen again during another race. Oh, I think a lot of us have been there and it can be incredibly frustrating. Now unfortunately stitch is a bit of a weird one. There are so many things that can cause stitch and it does come down to a bit of trial and error which is annoying. No one wants to bring on stitch in their training or racing but a case of really finding out what that root cause is. Now I can list out a number of reasons as to why it could be and I guess you can go away and sort of figure that out yourself. So one could be it's around fueling and hydration. Perhaps you are taking on too much and I've definitely experienced this before. I've had almost, I've come off the bike and I've had too much sat in my gut, my stomach that the body hasn't been able to process and therefore my your muscles contract and you end up with this stitch feeling. You can also get it from under fueling, weirdly. Um, it could also, despite you having a nice strong core, which sounds like you're working really hard on, it could actually also be tightness. Now, particularly as triathletes, you spend a lot of time hunched over on the bike, that can create tight hip flexor muscles. And again, this is something I've struggled with in the past. And whilst, okay, it's not necessarily stitch it can stem sort of up into that core region and be really quite uncomfortable if those muscles start to contract um, and yeah it could also be other tightness elsewhere perhaps you start to tense up in the latter stages of running your upper body again this can restrict things make it very uncomfortable cause an onset of stitch or as a result it can affect your breathing which again if you're not breathing out enough um, versus breathing in then that can also bring on stitch so there's a number of things a breathing one often is a thing that I feel Focus on when I do get a stitch. I really focus on exhaling, getting rid of that CO2, and then taking a nice breath in. But yeah, sometimes as we start to pick up the pace, our breathing can go a bit out of whack, and that can be the cause. So yeah, do let us know how you get on. If you find the solution, or if anyone else has any other suggestions, please do leave them in the comment section down below. Because as I say, a lot of us have experienced stitch, and it can be incredibly annoying, and it is no reflection, obviously, of our current fitness or ability. The next question comes in from Matt Wolf. Um, he says, "Love the GTN content. I'm actually a GCN convert." Uh, quick question. I'm following an Ironman 70.3 training plan that has approximately 150 individual workouts and 20 recovery days structured over an 18 week period with some days requiring two workouts. Unfortunately, I'm unable to complete two workouts in a day due to family and work obligations. So I've taken these 150 workouts and 20 recovery days and spread them out over a 25 week period so that I can complete all the workouts without needing to double up on any day. Will I experience less fitness gains if I spread the workouts out in this manner or will completing all the workouts over a longer period of time allow my body to absorb the training stress due to greater recovery between workouts? This is a very good question and I do appreciate that probably a lot of people are in a similar situation and I do appreciate these. There's lots of training plans out there that are readily available and yeah, you're trying to adapt them to fit with your life. It's a bit of a grey area because obviously whoever has designed that training plan has designed it in such a way for a reason and the reason that certain workouts are maybe on the same day is that they are trying to create straight training stimulus from those workouts being on the same day and also they're taking into account the training in the days prior and the days post. So by stretching that training out as they're currently planned 
may not really work and you start to lose the quality from the program. What I would say you're better off doing is actually focusing on the key quality sessions in the week. And what I mean by that, probably the, the harder sessions, when you look at them and get a little bit of a fright, they're probably the ones that you should be focusing on and therefore just following the same kind of structure in terms of um, you're not trying to elongate the plan and you're actually removing some of the workouts just to make sure it works with your life. Uh, the other thing to bear in mind as well is if you start stretching it out, it's also going to be a longer period of time before you get those recovery days as well. Um, and therefore you could actually, whilst you're not doing as much per day, you could run the risk of actually overtraining or starting to become quite fatigued because you haven't allowed your body or just physically some time to rest and recover and adapt and absorb all that training. So um, the main thing to do, just have a look through it and I, I'd probably try and stick to its current structure and just remove some of the workouts where possible. Very hard to say without looking at the programme, obviously, and talking to you personally about your life. Uh, right, next one from Tom Sorrell. Um, I often notice that my heart rate may be five to 10 beats per minute lower during easy runs after a big training block. Can this be a sign of fatigue? I often find this hard to interpret as sometimes heart rate can be higher under fatigue. Well, first off, great you're aware of this and you're tracking your heart rate. Um, now, a raised heart rate can be a sign that you are fatigued. However, a lower heart rate if you're still managing to run at the same paces and or maybe even faster, it's normally a sign that the training's working and actually you've got fitter. So I'd probably say that's a good thing. What I would be aware of is if you are starting workouts and you just cannot get going and that heart rate really just does not want to climb, maybe you can kind of get going eventually, but if initially it's just super hard to get going, that is a big red flag. That's a warning sign. You're probably overtrained, fatigued. But it sounds like in your case, You've just got fitter, which is great. <laughs> right, next one from Alex Smith. Uh, Semi-related question for you. Planning to do my first Ironman entirely in zone two, so I don't DNF. Should I be fueling with carbs like many recommend, something like 75 grams of carbs per hour? Or, as I'll be in zone two, the burning zone, uh, fat burning zone, is this excessive? I don't want to bonk, nor do I want GI distress from shoving down gels my body doesn't need. Uh, well, first off, uh, in terms of, sort of racing in zone two, sounds incredibly wise. And in fact, that's probably the sort of zone that most amateur age group athletes will be working in for an Ironman, um, perhaps starting to step into the lower end of zone three. Therefore, the fueling vice, advice that we do prescribe and um, suggest still stands. So you want to make sure that you are taking on carbohydrates. Even in zone two, you will be using carbohydrates as fuel um, it, it, unless you are the most efficient at fat burning fat um, you will still need carbohydrates so do make sure you're taking those on uh, typically we sort of suggest somewhere between 60 to 90 grams of carbs but we do obviously recommend that you practice this in your training make sure that you are comfortable with the food or the fuel that you're taking on and you've found how much you personally can tolerate and can take on whilst you're doing training or racing. So yeah, great question. Um, do make sure you check out some of our fueling videos on the channel, which we've done in collaboration with Precision Fuel and Hydration. And you can also actually use their fuel planner that's on their website, which is really good. You just plug in a load of information about yourself, your upcoming event, and it can give you a really, really, well, I say ballpark, but it's pretty um, accurate actually as to how much you'll need. Okay, um, final question from Lightwing. I come from a swimming background and have always been able to push my heart rate very high in the pool, recording 220 BPM at age 18. I'm now a 30 year old triathlete and can still push my heart rate pretty high when swimming or running, up to around 190 to 195 beats per minute, if doing some hard intervals. However, on the bike I struggle to get out of zone two, which Garmin says is 115 to 158 BPM for me. Even if I do an FTP test or race on Swift, I'm in zone two the majority of the time, even though I'm completely gassed at the end. The obvious answer is cadence, but that seems pretty normal. I normally ride at around 80 to 85 RPM when soft pedaling and go to 90 to 100 RPM when I go hard. So why does a hard bike session feel so tough even though my heart rate is staying in zone two? I feel like I'm not living up to my potential on the bike as theoretically I should be able to push more what if I could get my heart rate up to 180 to 190 like I can in swimming and running? Interesting question. I guess let's strip this right back. You do have 
different zones for swimming, cycling, and running in terms of your heart rate, okay? Now, when you are cycling versus swimming, you are using less muscles. So when we're swimming, we're pretty much it's a, a full body workout. And as a result, it is quite easy to get the heart rate really high. Similarly for running, because we are supporting our weight, that's the impact with that, we can end up getting our heart rate really high. It's not uncommon for people to find they can't get their heart rates anywhere near as high when on the bike. I'm the same. Um, now, so that means that you do need to do a fitness test or an FTP test in which you re calibrate or recalculate your zones for the bike so don't purely base them off the previous zones that you got from swimming or cycling and then in terms of rpm yeah you're spot on i wouldn't say there's anything to change there um, and if you are tracking your watts well that's a good gauge as to how well you're doing or not i mean you can sort of look at watts per kilo or base it and have a little ask around with some of your training partners see where they're at and um, unless you are drastically off or a lot lower than them um, i would say you're probably okay so it's just a case of recalibrating recalculating those zones for you on the bike well great questions this week uh, thank you for them keep please do keep them coming in using that hashtag gtn coaches corner and we'll see you next week